Right, good morning everybody, good afternoon, whatever time it is. I am live at the finish line here in Brest and we have we have none other than Lulu Drinkwater here. Congratulations. Oh, thank How are you, you doing? Me. I'm good, thank you. Um, amazing. Uh, how was the last couple of days? Last couple of days were just a slog, really. It's just like been like, you know, just pushing yourself through France. It seems to be never ending, doesn't it? Uh, never ending and generally shut. Yeah, everything's short. Like, you never know what you're going to find. So if I see somewhere open, I'm like, I must stop there. And then I just get like lost on messenger and video calls and stuff like that. <laughs> Spent too much time chilling, really. But I'm um, just so happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah, well, welcome to the finish line. Amazing ride Thank and uh, amazing routing as well. You stormed forward. Man. I know. Uh, so, like, I. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. And this Matt says, well done, Lulu. I got worried when you went deep into Bosnia, Thank but you. you made it. Um, so I, I met Lulu uh, top of the Seren. And then the next day we rode up uh, the kind of uh, the gallery road up to uh, the Col d'Ornon oh, together, which was, which was just amazing. And we were going to do a video then, but I'd run out of data. So we're kind of making up for that here. So yeah, no, I, I've had a load of friends watching you yeah. and a load of friends really kind of excited about the routing that you took. And yeah. You went completely off-piste. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get away from the cluster, really. I um, wanted to do my own thing and uh, be truly self-supported. I'm um, not saying that other people were self-supported, yeah. you know, but you know, it's just uh, it's just my character. I like to do things a little bit different. <laughs> um, but I didn't actually realise that I was going through Kosovo, and I just, you know, it sounds a bit stupid, but um, <laughs> I didn't realise until I got to the like passport control, and the guy was like, "Welcome to Kosovo." And then <laughs> I was like shitting myself. <laughs> I arrived in the middle of the night and it was chucking it down. And then I saw like this little tent with uh, like these uh, bridges lighting up at me. And some guy just stood there and all he was selling was sunflower seeds, water and energy drinks. And I just pulled up on the side of the road and he handed me out like a can of Red Bull or like a shell version of Red Bull. And uh, handed me a bottle of water. And I drank it, I was like, oh, thank you so much. He was, I was like, how much do you want for it? I went to grab my purse. And he just said, uh, no, it's okay. But obviously he couldn't speak English. But I was just like, wow, this is my first experience of Kosovo. And everyone else was just so friendly. I mean, I was breaking it, to be honest, because I thought, Kosovo, like, just never, been, never even thought of coming here. Like, I've got no idea about the place. I've done no research. Um, but then, you know, I just eased into it. And then there was the bears, like, I was cycling along the road. Uh, this is the, 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 the wolf story. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> this is not the wolf story. So tell us, that t you, you were telling me about the wolf story with the green eyes popping out at you. Yeah. Uh, so I thought I was like, I thought I was about 10 miles from the Bosnia border. Um, I was in Serbia and I started going up this climb uh, and it was just like proper eerie and the road was like crumbling away and there's like road works going on but no sign of any work going on whatsoever and I was just like went over this dip in the road suddenly it got so cold really foggy and uh, I was going through this like embankment and just out of the corner of my eye I saw this green pair of eyes light up and I thought oh right okay I mean I've had an experience with a couple of dogs so I just thought right well I'll go slowly past it and then I'll do a little sprint as I'm going past it and then another pair of eyes lit up right next to it and they were like woo, woo, like staring and obviously just woken them up next thing ping 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 <laughs> like three four more and then like they're actually like barking and growling and about to come out well they're coming after me and I just step on it and then two or three more come at me from the other side and I didn't want to stop then after that I just kept on like getting deeper into the forest and it was getting colder and colder. I needed to put my arm warmers on, but I was just so scared. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to stop. I waited until I was like, just at breaking point. Um, and then I found somewhere to sleep. Like I saw two ambulances and there seemed to be some movement. There was a restaurant next door and I noticed there was a, an ambulance base and I thought, oh, medics, yeah, they're respectable people. Like, <laughs> I feel safe sleeping next to them. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, um... Right, so Matt says, Lulu, when you were in Bosnia and saw most going through Serbia, was there a moment when you thought of changing routes? 
Yeah, I'm not uh, very experienced with route planning, as you may be able to tell. And uh, the thought of doing it on my phone wasn't really that something that I was comfortable with. And, you know, I just sort of made a decision to be like, okay, I've made my decision now and I'm just going to stick with it. So that's what I did. And what was your hardest moment? Um, hardest moment? It was just after the wolves, the hardest moment was um, me, I got scared. I understand that. I got scared, I didn't want to cycle through the night anymore and it sort of like was a reality check for me, like things can go horribly wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I when threw you myself in the deep savaged end. Savaged by a pack of wolves <laughs> in the middle of Kosovo. Yeah, yeah I mean, at first I were. thought they were dogs, but then it, like, it just kept on getting these flashbacks to it. And then I thought, hang on, their eyes, they were glowing in the dark. Like, that's not thats not what dog's eyes do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, look, amazing ride. Go get yourself a beer. Thank and, you, buddy. Uh, congratulations. Amazing ride to you thank as you, well. Thank you, thank you. And so uh, you. we'll catch you all again in a bit. I'm hopefully going to interview John shortly, uh, who uh, had a very special visitor for him here at the finish line. Uh, right, thanks, everybody. Catch you later. Bye.